Welcome back. So I wanted to make um, some videos about some of my beliefs and particularly law of attraction and how law of attraction has worked personally for me in my life. And hopefully you find it helpful and maybe you can implement some of this in your own life if you're struggling with that. Um, but um, here is how I found out law of attraction worked. Now, when I was early on, like in my early 20s, I was a young mom, as most of you know, if you've been following me, I was a teen mom. Um, and so I was going through college, super broke. <laughs> um, I was waiting tables at a pizzeria um, on the weekends to try and make ends meet. And it was, you know, a struggle. At the time I was, also uh, in a new relationship uh, with my now husband um, and been married for 14 years so that gives you an idea of how old I am but um, we were struggling you know we we were stressing a lot about money um, it was a very difficult um, but at the same time very exciting so I don't know if you are going through that now or if you remember if you're past that age in your life but just being independent and having our own place I remember it was so exciting at the time but being broke you know stunk <laughs> so um, we had made a pact with each other early on that we didn't want to let money squabbles affect our relationship with each other. And um, it's a well-known fact that a lot of relationships end due to money issues. And so we didn't want to be one of those statistics. And we just kind of told each other, you know, come what may, if we have each other, we'll find a way. And um, the funny thing is, is the moment we decided to not stress about it, not fight about it, and just kind of go with the flow, the easier things started happening. So um, to give you a good example, when we first moved into our very first house together, we um, moved states. So we moved from the north to the south. And in the South, they don't have labor unions. So men who work in construction in particular make a lot less money uh, in the South than they do the North. And so um, that's what my husband at the time was doing. And he took a major, major pay cut and we had just bought a house. But <laughs> that's where we wanted to live. And so we just made a pact that, you know, we would do whatever it took to make it work for us so that we could be in a location that we both loved. Um, now, when we very first moved into the house, we were just, just making like ends meet, like living paycheck to paycheck, basically, always moving around money. Um, we didn't know anything about home loans. And so we uh, signed on the dotted line to a terrible, terrible home loan. It, they're called balloon loans. I think they're illegal now, actually. <laughs> but as you can imagine, you know, the debt started piling up. The credit card debt started piling up. And then before you know it, our house needed repair. Um, you know, our fridge broke and at one point our washer and dryer broke and then our AC unit broke which is about five grand to replace in case you were wondering um, and it was really really easy and tempting to go at each other's throats to stress to get worried to cry <laughs> but uh, we both had made that pact with each other that we weren't gonna do that that we would figure it out and so even though I, I really wanted to internally dwell and worry and stress, I knew that that wouldn't help the situation. And so, you know, we just kind of felt like, all right, so we're going to figure it out and we're going to find a way. And we always did. It was like the moment we would let the actual stress go and just look at each other and be like, all right, worst that comes, we're out on the street. 
but we're still going to be okay. <laughs> you know? Um, then all of a sudden, you know, we would get like, he would get a random side job offer to do someone's driveway. He, he did concrete, you know, or work would pick up and he would get more hours. Or one time we got a random check in the mail. Apparently I had paid more than I was supposed to pay, um, towards one of our bills a long time ago and they were reimbursed us, but I had no clue it was coming. And it was, it was always funny how we always got the money at the exact moment we needed it. <laughs> One time we got an escrow check that we weren't expecting right when our uh, AC unit went out, you know, or, um, you know, his, my um, father-in-law sent us a random check once uh, that we weren't expecting and we hadn't told him what we were going through at the exact moment that we needed that money. You know, it was just, it's like, you know, once we started realizing the synchronicities that if you believe regardless that you're abundant, that you will always have enough, that you will always be okay, um, the universe responds, honestly. And it was like synchronicity after synchronicity after synchronicity. <laughs> um, to the point that at that point in time, my husband wasn't really into what I believed in. He he was kind of toying with it, but he wasn't as into it as I was. But it got to the point that even he couldn't deny, like, okay, this is crazy. Um, we got to check for the exact amount that we need right now. <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, so law of attraction doesn't mean that you're not going to go through hard times. That's not what it means. People think if they learn law of attraction, they'll wake up and be a billionaire one day. No, sweetie, no. <laughs> Honey, darling, no. That's not the way it works. Uh, what it means is that when you come to the crossroads, that if you understand and you believe um, that somehow your answer, your prayer will be answered or that you will be okay, that it always does end up okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, to give you another real life example, my husband decided to go back to college in his 30s. Um, I had a really good job um, as a nurse and so we were lucky in the fact that he could we could afford for him to kind of take a break from construction so that he could go to school for physical therapy. And um, he worked his ass off. So at the same time, we budgeted for the exact amount of years that he would need to be in school. And it was a tight budget. <laughs> so it was really, really important that he passed all of his classes and that he progressed into the program um, within that timeline, or we were going to be looking at some major debt. <laughs> no pressure, right? So he worked his ass off to uh, perform in school and to get through the program. Well, my, maybe a year or two in, I can't remember the exact timeline because I have a terrible memory. Um, there was an incident that occurred that was going to stop him from being able to progress in the program, uh, like a fluke incident where he was almost kicked out of the program and don't let your mind go to the worst. He did absolutely nothing wrong. Um, and I'm not going to get into the details of it, but basically he was told by the director of the program that he... Uh, wasn't eligible to continue anymore and she was as high as they get I guess on the decision chain and uh, made it sound like we had no way to um, combat that or we had no dog in the fight and of course you know our immediate reaction was panic um, you know how can this be how can she do that he only had a year left um, it wasn't fair because uh, he was working so hard and anybody that knows my husband knows that he's a he's just like one of those genuinely kind people you know 
Um, so it didn't make sense either, because why is this happening? He's a good person, blah, blah, blah. And so at first when we found out that he wasn't going to be able to progress in the program, of course, we're scared. Uh, now we've just invested all this money into his schooling um, and we're in debt now. Um, <laughs> our five-year plan was out the window. Also, it kind of makes you give up hope because you're like, wow, you know, he was doing all of the right things. And so why, why is he being punished right now? Um, but after we sat together and talked and cried, um, you know, the next day we both decided, because initially we wanted to fight it. And by we, I mean me. Because I am an Aquarius, but if somebody hurts somebody I love, like, I can be very vicious. <laughs> and so I went to the director of the program's office to fight this on behalf of my husband as if I was his legal representation. And I had uh, written this huge affidavit. I had printed all this legal paperwork off to prove to her that she didn't have the uh, ability to do this and to show her how it would affect us and our family and our finances. And she was a cold stone bitch. And I hate to say that. <laughs> I hate to say that. But she had no empathy whatsoever, uh, would not hear it. And I, I was just getting so upset that, that I literally had to leave the office because she wouldn't hear me out. Um, and so I came back home and my husband's finally like, Dana, you fought the good fight. I appreciate that you <laughs> tried, tried to stick up for me. Um, but you know, we just kind of got to let go. And so I decided, all right, yep, we just got to accept it, accept it. And you can reapply, you know, we had thought maybe he could reapply next year and pick up where he left off, but it still was going to leave us in debt at this point. And the moment we did that, the moment we did that and let it go and be not just let it go, but be at peace with it. Whatever was going to come was going to come. We got a phone call from one of his instructors. So she adored him. All of the instructors did. And um, she basically put her job on the line to stick up for my husband and found a way to get him to be able to stay in the program which is not something we ever would dream of asking anybody to do. We certainly did not expect that. And she got him back into the program. So he didn't even skip a beat. He ended up graduating right on time. It would take me forever to go into the details of all of what actually happened. But long story short, the moment we let it go, someone else took it into their hands and made it happen for us. And we just both looked at each other like in disbelief. I think we literally jumped up and down and like hugged each other. Like, oh my God, did that just happen? Like we had already come to the terms that it was over. There was no fight. You know, he just lost three years of his life that he invested into this program. <laughs> For it to turn around like that. Law of attraction. It's the belief that no matter what, you know, universe, God, source, whatever you call it in your life has got your back. And when you honestly, truly believe that, and also you are putting out that intention, good intentions, okay? That's, you know, you have an active part in this, but putting out that trust, that faith, that hope, then you would be surprised how not only do you get your prayers answered, but you usually get your prayers answered plus some, which is amazing. <laughs> so I wanted to share that with you guys. That's just a few examples. I have a lot more, a lot more examples. One of the things though that I want to drive home is that you absolutely have to have a part in this. 
So of all the stories I told you, we didn't just sit around and wait for the universe to bless us, you know, while we sat on our ass and did nothing. No. We were actively taking part in our lives and trying to find the good in the situation, trying to find solutions for ourselves. But the belief that no matter what, I'm going to be fine just allows things to flow a lot easier to you. Um, and the better I got at learning that mantra, the better I got at believing it, and especially after you start to see proof of it, the easier it works for you to the point that I'm to the point now where I can put a thought out there and basically see the results um, much faster, you know, because I understand how it works. You know, so if I feel like I'm struggling in life or struggling to let go or I'm heartbroken, I'm depressed, I have learned how to stop those racing thoughts, those negative thoughts, how to stop those and reframe my brain, reframe the way I think to put myself in a more positive energy. Because also you cannot attract or manifest when you're in a very low vibration. And you have the power to change that at any point in time. And it's literally what's gotten me out of black holes of depression. It's what's gotten me out of toxic relationships. It's what pointed me in the right direction to know who to trust, who not to trust, what career paths to take, what career paths not to take, what financial decisions to make. And now I, I pull it in easily to me. Um, and you'll start noticing, too, that the people that you surround yourself will change. Um, that you'll easily pull in people that are for your highest good, that are matching your vibration. To give a mundane example, the um, accountant we use to buy this house, uh, he's an independent broker. I just happened to run into him by happenstance. And he's such a good, he's a very high vibrating person. He went into independent he went to be an independent broker because of his own life struggles and he didn't want to work for a corporation and he's brilliant. He runs his business through his soul and not his ego. And people like that started flooding into my life that genuinely want to help me. So it's, it's a wonderful concept. I hope you learned something from this video that you can take and use in your own life till next time. I love you so much and I'm going to stay. Bye.